Wizard 101 is a game that has massive paywalls. However, about a week ago, King's Izo did something very historic, which has never been seen in the eyes of the community before. Or at least the wizard community. Which was basically to give everyone a chance to quest through Wizard City for free. Albeit with some restrictions since it was only one week. Anyway, that is how far we arrived to part 2 of how far can you make it in Wizard 101 without membership or crowns. And that basically means is, if you haven't watched part 1 of this series, I hope to continue it eventually. But if you haven't watched it, make sure to do so because none of this would make sense if you're watching part 2 without part 1. So with that being said, last we left off was level 17. And continuing with our journey on becoming the ultimate Pokemon master. Since most of Wizard City was free, I got to go to Cyclops Lane first. In Cyclops Lane, I met Norbert, the friendly neighborhood myth wizard, who doesn't really do anything at all but stand there all day. He tasked me to go to the dark cave and collect a skull. After turning in the skull, I was tasked to defeat some big muscular boys. This is how Harry Potter actually got his scar, and got turned into a real boy. After wasting my time for 5 minutes, Norbert here told me to contact Professor Drake about some missing students. At the Myth Shack, Cyrus Drake tasked me to collect his dirty laundry. Mr. Wood here had a good time, until I told him it was time to collect Drake's dirty magazines. I, I mean, I mean laundry. After lugging the sack of unmentionables back to Cyrus Drake, he told me to visit the headmaster. At that moment, I realized I was going to get expelled because I knew Cyrus's dirty little secret. But the headmaster leaned in my favor because he knew I was the only wizard in the entire spiral who could do anything but stand there. Returning to Norbert, he tasked me to defeat some war horns. I mean, they're basically minotaurs. I then went into the chambers of a child kidnapper. He was ultimately struck down by Voldemort's power. I then made my way into Firecat Alley, home to, surprisingly, not even one Firecat. Seriously, they should have renamed this Fire Elf Alley. There I met Private Quinn, who told me to defeat some Fire Elves and collect their arrows for his own little collection. I then went into an old lady's house. Do you guys know that most people in Wizard City don't actually lock their doors? Anyway, the old lady told me I gotta defeat a banshee in a different tower in order to cure the fire elves with their short stature. All that was left was to take down the big boss, or the the short boss, Alicane Arrow in the Knee. But it was all worth it. At the end of Firecat Alley, I got some nice boots. Ambrose told me to go to Old Town where he left a key in a tower. Because that is where you leave keys to the library archives, not to the librarian. In the tower, I saw someone dressed for Halloween very early. He didn't get no treats. After getting the key, Ambrose told me that he knew the source of all evil in Wizard City. I went to the tower that Merle Ambrose was talking about and found an old man with severe injuries. To relieve his suffering, I did the only thing I could do, which was send him into the underworld. Ambrose then told me there was more trouble afoot in Colossus Boulevard. Again, there are no colossi. There I met Mindy Gobbler Crown, who wanted me to defeat some members of her own race. And also some evil snowmen for some reason. The gobblers proved to be very unskilled in combat. And one by one, every gobbler in the streets fell. Mindy then told me that there were two trusted advisors to the Gobbler King. Baron Rotten and Baron Greedy. They both went down like a sack of potatoes, yet they only eat ice cream. Then I was told it was time to confront the Gobbler King. I went into the castle expecting the king, but what I found was a very obese boy, who I assume skipped leg day. Like the other gobblers before him, he also fell. And not very gracefully, I might add. It was time to confront the Gobbler King. He decided to tell me his life story and why he was here in the first place. After he found out I defeated his two sack of potatoes, he quickly surrendered. I went back to Ambrose with the news and informed him. And as it turned out, he let them stay. But on one condition, 
as long as the gobblers agreed on an exercise program that they followed every day. The next part in our journey was to either do Sunken City or complete Crab Alley. Maria wanted to prove to Professor Drake that Grub, the burnt-faced ghoul, existed. Who better to accomplish such a feat than a wizard that happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time? Even though I did not care for her dumb project, I wanted the experience for it. With that in mind, I decided to go in the ghost-infested sunken city. I was the bell of the undead ball as each guest that came up got a crack into their face. Then finally, it was time to face the charred ghoul. He was made even more crispier by meteor strikes that rained down. With Sunken City finished, I went back to Triton Avenue and talked to Homeless Somebody. He said that I had to fix the magical lightning generators below in Crab Alley. Under the sea, there were a ton of these river claw guards that had no claws at all, but webbed feet and hands. After defeating the guards, I went to talk to the king's advisor who was locked up in a cage. He told me in order to fix the generators, I would need to let him out. I was able to get the key from the guard captain and soon freed the advisor. The next stop was meeting King Thermic Shield. I told the crabs that their king was a big doofus but apparently they couldn't see the difference between a crustacean and sea monster. My next task was rescuing the real king from the depths of deep warrens. I completed a ton of defeat and collect quests which involved running back and forth around the map. Keep in mind I didn't have a mount so it was quite lengthy. I had finally made it into the inner sanctum where the king told me he was tricked into performing a show for his rival. I thought he got socked in the face too hard and his brain deflated because this was a cave. Luckily for me, the generators were in back of the cave. There I met Dr. Zoidberg and the Eel Boys. I quickly defeated them and was told I needed to collect machine parts and an eel electricity in order to fix the generators. With the generators fixed, I went back to the Crab Kingdom to confront King Thermic Shield. After completing Crab Alley, I started to do all the side quests for every single street in Oldie Town. I helped the guards in Cyclops Lane get better armor, Pennywise get out of the dark cave, some guy complete his artifact collection, and Zeke with his smiths. I also completed quests for Grandma Crankle to receive my set of inferior bazaar gear. At level 21, I decided to farm raw in Croctopia. Now I know what you're thinking, it requires crowns or membership. However, for whatever reason, it doesn't, allowing me to obtain level 20 gear. With every single quest done in Wizard City, it was time to run the housing gauntlets. The one thing I do have to note is that if you make it to the level 20 threshold, the gauntlets are then set to tier 2, resetting the amount of experience that you get. I had to do all of them twice since the second time around it still gives experience. And to answer the question, how far can you make it in Wizard 101 without crowns or membership? Level 27. Now alternatively, like I said in part 1, you could just keep grinding enemies and keep fighting them. But that really isn't fun, now is it? At this point, I paid a visit to Lydia and trained all the spells up to my level. I also paid a visit to the bazaar and bought some level 25 gear. So what have we learned in part 2? Just wait until the second world is free. Now as far as sequels go, I think I might continue on with this series into part 3 if they decide to make Croctopia free. However, I do have some other projects that I have in mind, but most of them are pretty lengthy. Meaning they would take quite a bit or quite a while to come to fruition. Now do I recommend people do this instead of paying for membership? Not really. Since it's only $10 a month and I think you could just blitz through the game if you try hard enough. And also if you're new to this game, the first month's membership is usually $4.95 so it's just 5 bucks. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other challenges or games that you would like me to try, put that down below in the comment section. Also, thank you guys for 500,000 views on how far can you make it in Wizard 101 without crowns or membership. And for 3,600 subscribers. I remember 3 months back I only had 177 subscribers and all of a sudden I have this many. So with that, like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if you disliked it, but I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care and peace out.